<laughs> well, that's Rosalie and, I'm Rosalie. Uh, and yeah. John Hermes. We've been in Brookline since 1971. My name is Faith Park and I've been a resident of Brookline for about two and a half years now. And we've had a wonderful experience here in Brookline. My name is Tiffany Gordon and I have lived in Brookline my whole life, 26 years. I'm Jess Lerner and I run Green on the Inside, a green living consulting business here in Brookline. My name is Alan Balsam and I'm the Director of Public Health and Human Services here in Brookline. My name is Rihanna Good and I teach Spanish in the Boston Public Schools. Hi, my name is Sophie. <coughs> I'm six years old I go to, and I go to Lawrence School. My name is Frank Smizek. I'm the uh, representative, state representative from the 15th Norfolk District, which includes Brookline, most of Brookline. I'm also chairman of the uh, Committee on Global Warming and Climate Change. I'm Jesse Murmel and I'm in my first term as a selectman here in Brookline and we're the executive branch of town government. Brookline 2010, a community climate challenge, is a collaboration between public entities, private entities, religious entities, and individuals and families here in Brookline where we're asking people to do a few simple things to help reduce our carbon footprint as a town. One is to make a change in your life or adopt a new behavior that will reduce your carbon footprint. And it can be anything that works for people or for businesses or organizations. If it's something simple like no more plastic bags, you're going to use reusable bags, or if it's something more extensive like going vegetarian 365 days a year. We're trying to meet people where they are and get them to make changes that work for them. We're sitting in the Brookline Health Department headquarters at 11 Pier Street in the heart of Brookline Village the first green building in Brookline. And we love our house, but it is old and it's drafty, and so we've done quite a lot of bit to our, our windows. We've weatherized our windows, our doors. Uh, we've done caulking all along the baseboards, and insulation is the next step. We had the blower door test done in our house, and that was really helpful in just um, determining where the problem areas were and, and targeting those specifically. Um, most recently, we did have uh, a new boiler put in, more efficient, and we insulated the walls. We're having some energy efficient windows put in, but not for the entire house. I've always been conscious of not wasting things and turning out lights, using both sides of a sheet of paper, um, all of the kinds of things that we now realize are really very, very important. Where we're sitting now is our used bookstore, and that in itself is recycling in a very great way. We've had the um, used bookstore for four years, almost five, I think, and um, customers just love it. They bring in books and sell them to us, and then other people buy them, and it really keeps books from ending up in the trash or the pulp factory or whatever. I remember switching uh, away from plastic bags at the grocery store and I know there are all sorts of arguments about how big of an impact that really makes but for me it was an aha moment because it was so simple. I'm also a proud bicycle commuter. It's such a beautiful ride from Brookline to Forest Hills and JP every day. I am constantly talking about how I get to go by Leverett Pond through Olmsted Park and by Jamaica Pond and by the Arboretum. And so my connection to nature is heightened. I get to observe more. I breathe fresh air. I get my heart pumping. And I also avoid a lot of traffic. And we started taking showers at the gym, <laughs> so we've given so we someone else our given again. someone else our carbon footprint. <laughs> but maybe BU, maybe the BU gym is more <laughs> is more efficient in its use of energy than we are. Well, if, every day at recess when we go outside, I I pick up trash that I find every single piece, even if they're small, big or small, and even medium. I just pick it up. It makes my day, for example, when I'm walking over to Northeastern picking up litter and somebody will come by me who's also walking and says, now you got me doing it. And I say, that's the idea. You know, if we all do it, the place will look good. People respond to examples. And, um, and we all like to think that we're part of something 
greater than ourselves. And I think it's one of the reasons why we want to do this as a community. I'm a teacher here at the high school. I teach ninth grade world history and I teach a social justice class which uh, trains students to become lifelong advocates for social justice. So two years ago I was in Costa Rica on a family trip and the, the sights and the sounds were just overwhelming. The, the buzzing and the chirping in the forest had this incredible lyrical quality. The smell was intoxicating and after being there for a few days I realized I could no longer defend my lifestyle. I could no longer defend my practice as a teacher. I had to make that not only a commitment in my practice here as a professional, but in my daily life. My mother was very conscious of preservation, of uh, protecting the environment. We lived in Florida, much of my youth, and uh, it was a time when Florida needed people like my mother to really be watching. Um, the waters, the bird rookeries, all those things. I was fortunate to grow up with parents who loved the natural world. And my father um, took us into the Quetico country of, of southern Canada. And his ethic was the concept of leaving no tracks in the wilderness. And that was the beginning of a lifelong appreciation and love of, of my sense of place. Ever since I was a kid, I've always loved parks and open space, uh, loved cities, uh, loved history, loved the city of Boston, even though, believe me, in the 40s and 50s and 60s, it was like most American cities, deteriorating badly. And what you see today in Boston is quite remarkable, given some of the damage we did to it during the 40s and 50s and 60s. We have pretty much a vegetarian uh, diet and uh, um, you know, wanting to know that our food is locally produced and of high quality, supporting local agriculture, being a member of a community agricultural service. These types of issues are important to us and, and our family. So I picture 20 years from now, students coming back to me and saying, Mr. Grandy, you failed us. You didn't tell us, you didn't prepare us for the greatest challenge uh, of our lifetimes and, and perhaps uh, for the planet. Um, you know, what happened? Why didn't, you, why didn't you help us with that? It's a very hard issue to work on because it's really scary. If you begin to look at the data, if you look at the images uh, in terms of the destruction of habitat, the water wars that are beginning um, in Africa and other parts of the world, the walls of denial can only be penetrated if we work together to educate ourselves and in the process of doing that we build community. I have a 25 year old daughter so I'm very mindful of what her later adult life and, and her children should she have them, what is going to be left for, for future generations. You know, I picture the giant landfills and then I picture my little bag of trash once we recycled and I think so important and it's so easy if everyone would just do it. There is so much waste in our society. There's so much that we do that we don't we don't realize um, how these things are going to impact future generations. So the diapers is one example where one diaper will sit in a landfill for years and years and years long after we're gone, long after our children or our grandchildren are gone. It's very much preventable. It's very much the consumers can can drive the demand for the products that are more environmentally friendly. Everything we do, whether we're conscious of it or not, uh, has some sort of impact. It has impact on workers, it has impact on resources. All the choices we make and when we consume uh, our transportation choices has a tremendous impact. So we're all already making a difference. And I want students to be able to understand or to become more conscious of the choices they make, to, to understand that the choices connects in a very real way to a global economy, that it could have grave consequences as well as tremendously positive consequences. But all of us, including those of us in this very special town, I think have a responsibility to be part of it. And much of what we can do is good for us as well as for the planet. 
One of the things that inspired me to go green in my life was knowing that it's so easy to make a difference. And I want people to understand that there are countless ways to go green that are simple and some that are more complex. Stop using plastic bags, go vegetarian one day a week, have meatless Mondays or whatever works in your house, walk to work maybe one day a month, uh, or you can do an energy audit and have a blower door test and retrofit your entire house. Get rid of your car and become a member of a car sharing organization. I am a committed cyclist because it's good for me and because it's good for the environment. Not only am I not contributing to the production and disposal of cars, I'm also avoiding the use of fossil fuels. So I get my whole family to recycle. So my dad, my mom, even my little sister who's only one year old. And even at lunchtime, I still recycle. Um, being a smart consumer and thinking about um, where is this going to end up? Um, how can I recycle it? Can I reuse it? Or should I not even be purchasing it if it's something that is going to, you know, just go to waste and take up more space in a landfill? In the new year, definitely I wanted to commit myself to figuring out how to make composting a part of my life. If you weather rise, you use less heat, therefore you use less electricity. You waste water all the time, so please listen to this rhyme. Don't waste water, it is bad. If you do, it will be sad. We think every, every pound of, of carbon dioxide that we can reduce putting into the atmosphere helps. We think we can be good examples. Nobody's gonna tell me that we can't do this and at the same time have a healthy and prosperous economy that creates real opportunity for people. Don't waste water, don't you dare. I won't waste water, I do swear, because I care. It's important to think about issues like the climate crisis because this is our world. If we don't think about things like that and we continue to pretend that it's not going to affect us, when we do realize it, it's going to be too late. So we really need to start doing our part and educating others and starting to take it seriously. With this project, with Brookline 2010, I think one of the pieces that's going to shift the consciousness of our entire society is seeing community work together. It's at the grassroots that change is really going to happen. I want to look back at this era of, um, of climate change and know that Brookline residents have taken seriously the, the issue of global warming and have taken action as urgently as they can uh, to reduce our particular community's carbon footprint. The town is filled with people who genuinely care and the sense of community is really remarkable. I think we've got to do this as a community. We live in a very, very special place. I mean, Kitty and I have been here since the day they brought us home from the hospital. Um, and uh, we love this community. And we're part of something more than just ourselves. And it just so happens these days we're part of a planet that is threatened environmentally. And if that can't arouse us, I don't know what will. But I think we are all helped when we have a sense that everybody else is doing it too. Gandhi says that we need to be the change that we want to see in the world. So it starts with us. If one person can make a change and just do a little bit, then someone will see that person doing that differently and they'll be forced to consider their actions. And then they might also make a change. And one by one, step by step, little by little, that's how change happens. So even though it seems like it's a big, daunting task, we shouldn't be deterred. We should be more motivated to do our little bits and inspire others to change as well. Brookline 2010. Green a little, change a lot. Brookline 2010. Green a little, change a lot. Green a little, change a lot. Brookline 2010. Green a little, change a lot. Brookline 2010, green a little, change a lot.